Hi, my name is Steve Tegler. I'm a Senior Director of Systems Engineering in VMware's Cloud Native Apps Business Unit. And this Lightboard session is around clear contracts in IT. And you know, the, the, the easiest example of a clear contract is between maybe a software developer and the way a public cloud operates today. In that when they go to that public cloud, they have an API that they interact with and uh, they know all the features and functionality that are available. And meanwhile, that public cloud com provider can do anything under the covers to that public cloud provided they don't uh, mess with the contract of the consumption model of that public cloud. So what I wanted to do was analyze an on-prem situation and what that looks like and really take, uh, um, really go through some examples here, all the way starting at the, just the data center and working our way up. And so if we take a look at the data center here, um, you know, those, uh, the facilities po folks there, you know, they're, they're choosing um, various like APC and Liebert for, you know, the cooling and the racks and all sorts uh, of things. And the clear contract that they have with the physical infrastructure folks is that they're providing them a 19-inch rack. They're providing them maybe a, some sort of specific type of power plug. And then they've got some air conditioning uh, uh, going on in there as well, right? And so they have a contract with the infrastructure team that says, here's the parameters you get to work with. Meanwhile, the infrastructure team gets to go and, well, I'm going to choose a Dell um, R610 for my server. And I'm going to choose... Uh, let's see, uh, EMC slash uh, Dell for my storage. I'm going to choose Cisco for my network and maybe Palo Alto for my firewall here. And so provided all those things fit in a 19-inch rack and you've got the power and cooling requirements, you're good to go, right? So let's move up to virtual infrastructure. So virtual infrastructure, what is their clear contract with the physical infrastructure folks? Well, for them, it has to be x86 and probably on, if we're doing VMware, it needs to be on some sort of hardware qualification matrix to ensure compatibility. You need IP connectivity and you're probably going to need some uh, performance from storage like IOPS, uh, so from a performance perspective, or latency. To, uh, and even connectivity, right? Do I need shared storage or whatnot? So that's, um, that's the, the type of connectivity you need. Uh, or you may specify, and that's my clear contract. So with that, then I can go in and I can choose vSphere. I can maybe choose um, uh, just traditional data stores. And uh, I'm going to use NSX for networking, and potentially I've got some integrations with NSX from a security perspective. And so if we take a look at this very simple example, if I have clear contracts here, that allows these different teams to operate independently of each other. And so, so take for example, what if I wanted to change out my server to the next, uh, uh, next Dell uh, server here, like the Dell 6600, right? Yeah, just made that up. Uh, the Dell 6600 here has uh, eight sockets and 192 gigs uh, or terabytes of RAM, right? It's great, I want to use it. I'm able to change to that server because I haven't changed these parameters, the x86, the IP connectivity. And as long as it's on the vSphere qualification matrix, you're good to go. You know, maybe I want to swap out Cisco for Arista for switching. Because Arista is going to provide the same type of IP connectivity to support NSX, I'm good to go. Okay. Next uh, piece is the developer abstractions. And this is the important one because now we're talking about what the end consumer wants. And so, um, in this case, the developer abstractions, let's call these out. Maybe it's infrastructure as a service. Maybe it's Docker. Maybe it's Kubernetes. Or maybe it's Cloud Foundry. These are some very common abstractions that a developer can work on top of. Okay? And so, as I look at these various technologies, they all need to integrate with some sort of infrastructure. And what that means typically is that there's usually like some sort of plugin. And I'm just using the generic term plugin to work um, with the virtual infrastructure in this case here with each one of these solutions. And the trick is I can't swap out this technology 
unless an adequate plugin exists uh, in any given uh, developer abstraction. So this can be fairly unique depending on the technology and the and the capabilities. But you know certainly uh, some of the you know the very common ones like uh, take Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes. In the case of you know we've got our uh, PKS right. Those all leverage or those two leverage a technology called Bosch, which has the ability to deploy down to the VMware software defined data center, leverage NSX, and so forth. So finally, here these are the developer abstractions. And so now I'm starting to provide this IT service to the software developer. So what's my clear contract with the actual consumer? And that clear contract is actually pretty simple. It's about providing the native API experience. So um, if we specifically call out some of the container ones like Kubernetes, right? I want to be able to provide Kubernetes in a native way. I want to use upstream Kubernetes so that the software developer, when they're figuring out you know, how to actually architect, they can go to Google and they can go uh, search and figure out how to do things. And I'm not using some proprietary version of Kubernetes, which requires me to use some completely different API, and it's difficult for them. So my clear contract here um, as a software developer, with the software development team, if I'm running the developer abstractions layer, is that I provide that API experience. And that could potentially give me uh, the opportunity to you know, um, displace maybe an IaaS, uh, maybe we're talking about OpenStack, right? Um, and maybe I'm running uh, you know, some vendor's version of OpenStack. Maybe I want to um, uh, provide VMware integrated OpenStack. Provided that gives the same upstream experience, we're good to go. Same with uh, Kubernetes and PKS. So uh, hopefully this gives you kind of a good model to think about as you're, as you're staring um, at this stack and, and, and you know, some of the decisions you can make. And you can really start to understand the power of giving these teams the independent decisions to choose the technology that affects their job function. Thanks for watching.